So I promised that I would explain ex falso, quad libit, and I brought Kyle and Bronwyn with me to help make sure that the explanation kind of makes sense. I'm just going to draw it out on the whiteboard because I feel like that's the easiest way. So the way this works is we start with the hypothesis that there's a true contradiction. And in formal logical notation, you would write that as P for premise, and it is not the case that P. So this triangle symbol means and, and this tilde means it is not the case that. So this could mean premise or proposition. It's any assertion, any assertoric sentence. So your assertion could be it is raining, and it is not the case that it is raining, or Kyle is the best, and it is not the case that Kyle is the best, or any assertion at all. And we call this the hypothesis. Uh, we can state this as a hypothesis, but if there were a true contradiction, then that would be the fact that we would start our argument from. From that uh, hypothesis, we can derive just P. And the way you do that is with the, the rule that's called simplification. And you apply the rule of simplification to line number one. Now, this symbol means and. So if both halves of the sentence are true, then you know for sure that at least one half of the sentence is true. So if, if I say to you, it is Tuesday and it is raining, you know for sure that it is Tuesday is true. You can derive that from it is Tuesday and it is raining. Then your next, your next sentence is P or Q. This is the OR symbol. In uh, logical notation, OR is called inclusive OR, which means that one half of the sentence may be true, or both halves of the sentence may be true. You're allowed to do this by the logical rule of addition applied to line number two. And the way that you can think of this is, it is Tuesday, which we derived from it is Tuesday and it is not the case that it is Tuesday. It is Tuesday or the moon is made of green cheese, Bronwyn is the best, uh, it smells like socks in here, any other assertion, any other assertoric sentence, any other uh, particle of an argument. So this addition is just saying we know for sure that this is true, so Either this or this must be true also. And then we can derive again, using the same rule of simplification, we can derive the second half of the sentence, which is, it is not the case that P from simplification of line one. So in just the same way that we were able to isolate just the first clause of this sentence, we can isolate just the second clause. Uh, and then lastly, the last step of our little argument is uh, disjunctive syllogism. I don't really know what disjunctive syllogism means, but it's the rule that says if you have these two and you know for sure that it's not this one, then it must be this one. So this sentence says something like it's Tuesday or Bronwyn is the best. This sentence says it is not the case that it's Tuesday. So essentially you're canceling these out and you get this all that's left is therefore Q, the second half. Now the thing that's tricky about this or the principle of explosion here is that if you start from a hypothesis of a contradiction then any conclusion logically follows. You can derive anything if you start from this as your 
starting premise. So, if there is a true contradiction in your set of beliefs, or in your science, or in your theology, or anywhere, then you can derive any conclusion from that. So this is also called the principle of explosion. Uh, and basically what it, what it means is, if you embed a contradiction, you can't stop anything from getting into your belief set. So if, you're, if your belief set includes a contradiction, then you're going to embed this at the end.